It has come to my attention that many of you didn't know this, but did you know that you can actually replace the router that your ISP has provided you with? Now, I appreciate this might be different from country to country, but here in the UK with the provider that I'm with, I'm actually able to use my very own router. Now, for a bit of context, I'm with a company called Ufiber here in the UK. They are relatively new. I'm going to say they do something called FTTP, which stands for fiber to the property. And what this essentially means is that I get a full fat fiber cable coming into my property. It connects into something called an ONT or optical network terminal. And then I have an RJ45 jack, which means I can pretty much do whatever I want. So this is what an ONT looks like. So if we take a look underneath, we've got power. And then on the left hand side, this is the fiber coming into the property. And then obviously this next to it is the RJ45 cable that comes out and goes directly into my router. Now the router they provide is this thing here, which is an Amazon Aero 6. Now there's nothing wrong with the Amazon Aero 6, but if you are a home lab enthusiast, you are going to be looking at alternative options to an Amazon Aero because they're just not that powerful and they have certain limitations imposed by your ISP. Now the second my internet came through the door, I ended up just disconnecting the Amazon Aero and just ran it as an access point basically or a mesh access point. And I've also got another Amazon Aero 6 Pro, I think they're called. Now what I ended up doing, I ended up replacing the Aero with this GLI net router here. It is a really, really good router and has some really cool features and I really like that it runs something called OpenWRT. But it is now time to step it up. Now, what I ended up replacing my router with is this Alter Labs Route 10. Now, they have kindly sent all of this out to me, but the video is not sponsored and no money exchange hands. So this is kind of my own personal opinion on this. But it has some super cool features that I'm going to show you kind of how I configure my home network. And this is essentially what I'm using to run my whole entire network off. And it's got things like VLANs. It's got so many super cool features that, as I said, I want to show you shortly. But I just want to give you a bit of an overview and context as to what we're going to be talking about today. Now, as well as this route, obviously this Autolabs route 10, they've also sent me a eight port switch and it's a PoE switch. And then they've also sent me an AP6 and an AP6 Pro. So they are access points which run over power over ethernet PoE. Now this video is not to discuss kind of PoE and all the kind of access points, but I just wanted to show you the user interface and how I've got everything configured. And I love the fact that I'm finally unshackled from some of the basic routers that most most ISP providers provide you and I've now got full control over my home network through obviously the ONT and through this uh, Route 10 from Alter Labs. Now speaking of the actual router, it has four Ethernet ports. Two of them are PoE, which means you can connect your access point to one of them. And then the other two are just normal RJ45 ports, but one is obviously a WAN port. And then you have two SFP plus ports for your 10 gig connections. Now what's super cool about the Ethernet ports is that they're actually two and a half gig ports, all four of them. So more and more people are starting to have faster internet than just gigabit. And I appreciate that's not everywhere, but I could potentially have up to eight gigabit internet in my house. So this router will be well adapted to kind of uh, to my needs and also for future proofing in case I do decide to upgrade my internet. Now they've got a super user-friendly web interface, which as I said, we're gonna jump into shortly and then I'll show you how I've got my whole home network configured. And as I said, I just absolutely love that I'm free from kind of the constraints of your traditional additional internet service providers. So enough waffling, let's jump over to the computer and then let's get started. And I also need to make sure I plug this back in because my internet is essentially offline as I'm filming this video. Now right off the bat, I wanna mention a downside with this setup because at this moment in time, I have to use the manage.alter.inc website in order to get onto my controller here. Now obviously this is a pro because if you're away from home and you need to make some configuration changes, you can just use the app where you can remote in using obviously your laptop or whatever. Obviously as you can hope hopefully see one of the downsides is that if you are trying to remote in from home because the internet's down and you're trying to make some changes because you've messed something up, then it is a little bit more difficult. You'd have to then find ways around it where you'd have to tether or use a second internet line or something like that in order to manage this. Now I know Alter Labs have a Docker container where you can essentially run this controller. So you can potentially get into it from obviously a internal IP address if you have it configured that way. But most people are gonna start out probably find it a lot easier to just use the kind of the cloud management interface. So hopefully in the future, we will have a way where we can get into the router and make 
some configuration changes. But looking at the dashboard, this is what you are going to see when you click onto the dashboard here. And you can obviously see top devices that are talking to the internet, top applications. And ironically, if we click into it, we can see Amazon, 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 Amazon. And this is kind of why I wanted to create segmentation on my network and have a completely separate kind of VLAN. Now, the next thing that's super cool on the Alta Labs dashboard is the map for me, because if we take a look here, we can see exactly how everything is configured. We have our internet coming in, which goes into the router, which is then connected to a switch or an AP, which I've got downstairs. And then also you can see what else is connected to the switch. You can see at what port it's connected to. Now, keep in mind, I've got an unmanaged switch as well. So anything that goes from my switch and you can see port eight, that is my unmanaged switch. I cannot control that. And I am thinking of upgrading that in the future. But we can see, for example, we've got another AP upstairs here and I'm actually staring at it directly right in front of me. And we can see that the printer's connected to it. We can see that an Amazon device is connected to it. And I know that because it's a .50 IP address. And I'll show you that in a second because of how my VLANs are configured. Now on the settings, this is really where the meat and potatoes is off this kind of setup that I have. So here, and this is one of the super cool things with Alta Labs is you can configure something called Alta Pass. And essentially what that does is you can have different passwords pass you into different VLANs. And this is exactly how I've got it configured. And I hope I don't give my passwords away, but this is my Wi-Fi name here. And if we take a look, my standard home network is my .40 address, which I use for everything basically at home. And then I have a .30 VLAN configured. So if somebody enters the password for the .30 VLAN, it drops them into the Internet of Things VLAN. So it separates them out into a completely separate network. And this is how I have my Amazon Alexas and all the other kind of smart devices that I have at home configured. And then I also have the .50 network, which is my guest network. Now, some other features in the Wi-Fi settings here is you can configure your 2 gig and your 5 gig bands here. So you can make quite a few changes. You can hide an SSID, for example. So if you have a IoT network that's completely separate, you can buy all means tick this box because nobody else really needs to connect to that. So you can then have say a guest network and a your kind of your main network and you can make some other changes in here. Now on the networks, this is where you go ahead and configure all your VLANs. So this is my current configuration here where my home network is .40, which is kind of the main network here. Then I have my IoT as I've just discussed, and then I also have my guest network, and then I have one which is for home lab only. And I wanna show you that briefly if I go over to my Proxmox server here, and then I click on network devices here, and I can select a VLAN tag of 100 here. And what's gonna happen is when that Windows 11 VM starts up, it's gonna drop it into my VLAN 100. And this is what I have configured here. So we can see it gives you the 10.0.100 address. Now, if I click on the network tab, here's where you can see all the kind of configurations that you have and all the devices that you have. So currently I've got four devices connected, it gives me my IP addresses. So you can see the router, the switch and the two access points that I have. It also tells me my channel here, as well as my five gig channel that I have configured. And then you can see how many devices are connected. Now, in order to make changes to anything, so if I wanted to make changes to my router, I have to actually click on the router and then expand the kind of the window that pops up here. And then I can, for example, click my switch and do the same. And then I can have them side by side. Now, to me, this isn't kind of the nicest layout. It's good, but I think this could do with like a dedicated page. And just to show you for comparison, this is what OpenSense config page looks like. And this is the kind of the LAN interface. So here's where I can make all the changes to the interface, set static IP addresses. Don't get me wrong, it looks really nice, especially the purples, because obviously it's my brand color here. But I do would just prefer something like this, where I can have a full page kind of to make changes and a bit more of a bigger, if that's the word, user interface rather than here, where I have to then click advanced and then go down and so on. But here's where I can make more changes. So for example, and this is what's super, super cool, I can click on my WAM port here and I can see all the changes. So I can make, for example, download limits. I can set up IP addresses. I can do many, many things in this setup here. Now, in order to configure ports, I can literally just click on a port and then I get brought up with this user interface here and we can see the name. So in this case, this is the access point port that I'm using. We can see kind of the modes that I can configure. So if I wanted to make this a second WAN port, I could. And then here is where you can configure your VLAN. So for example, if you have multiple network switches, you can make sure that you do not pass certain VLANs through. So if you have a dedicated network switch that's only responsible for your home lab, you can only have it pass through VLAN 100. So I could turn all the other VLANs off if I wanted to and have it only pass through VLAN 100. So then nothing else can kind of get into that VLAN. 
I can also turn on PoE. PoE is power over ethernet. So essentially, instead of having a separate power connector plugged into your access point, for example, you get both internet and power going over an ethernet cable. And you could turn this off if you're trying to do power savings, for example, where you do not need any of the ports to do PoE, you can actually turn this off. But in my case, I've got my access point connected, which is a PoE access point. Now, if I then click over to devices, here's where I've got a breakdown of all my devices that are currently connected to my network. I can see which port they're connected to. I can see which link they have. So for example, the my iPhone is currently connected on access point 02, which is connected, obviously tells me what the SSID is. But if I have a look further down here, I can see that these are all Amazon devices here and they are connected also to my access point. But if we take a look, they are on VLAN 50 here and I can see that by the IP address. So I've essentially segregated out my Amazon Echoes and my IoT devices onto VLAN 50. So they're kind of separate and it is an isolated network, so it cannot talk back. But in order to reserve an IP address, in my opinion, it's not the most intuitive because again, if I go into OpenSense and I use OpenSense as a comparison because I'm really, really familiar with it. But if I click on ISC DHCP and if I click on the main VLAN, right at the bottom, I can see DHCP static mappings for this interface. And here is where I can click plus and I can paste the MAC address in and then make all all the changes in here. On Alter Labs, and this might just be because I'm so used to OpenSense, I have to actually click on the device and then here is the IP address. And if I leave it blank, it sets it to just DHCP, so it just hands out random IP addresses. Or if I want it to, I needed to make this permanent by doing 10.0, 40.21, say like so. And then I can just do other things where I can pass it into a certain VLAN if I wanted to, for example, just that, that device, I can pass it into a specific VLAN. So if I wanted to pop into VLAN 50, this is how I would configure it. And then I can set rate limits. So for my Amazon devices, for example, I've got a rate limit of 100 megabits because they do not need any more internet than that. Now, a couple of the things that I'd like to kind of see improved on Alter Labs is potentially an integration with something like Telscale or Netbird because I do like to use Telscale. You know I'm a big fan of Telscale and I'd like to just see some kind of integration with that because I would just be like to have this on my network and then be able to remote in sec securely and safely into my kind of home network and be able to manage it from a anywhere. That's definitely something I would absolutely love. Now, I know there are ways around it, but just being able to have that kind of integration would be absolutely amazing. But overall, I think it's a brilliant interface and I'm really, really happy with it. And it's nice and easy to manage from the internet, obviously, as I said, as long as the internet doesn't go down. Access points are absolutely brilliant. The switch is absolutely brilliant. Honestly, my internet has improved massively at home and I'm definitely going to play around with VLANs even more to be able to isolate my network and get it configured correctly. But let me know what you think. Have you heard of Alter Labs? Is this something that you've come across? And have you seen kind of some of their setups or have you played around with their gear yourself? Because I know the competition is massive in this kind of home lab space. You've obviously got Unify, you've got them, you've got Microtik, you've got quite a few companies now who are starting to make a bit of a name for themselves, especially in the home lab space. If you're interested in finding out more about Tailscale, because I think Tailscale is absolutely brilliant, go ahead and watch this video down here because this walks you through a complete Tailscale setup up on how to get it configured on your network and how to be able to access all your services and all your NAS containers and so on from outside of your home network.